With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Friday, May 20th, 2016. Legislation was introduced yesterday by Michigan Senator Jim Ananique of Flint that would give Flint the authority to manage its long-term recovery. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that a draft of the legislation includes language that would allow Flint to form a municipal authority with responsibilities to manage state, federal, and grant funds aimed at the long-term rebuilding of Flint's infrastructure. Senator Ananique says that no city is set up to handle this kind of problem, and because the tax base of Flint has dried up over the years, he introduced this bill to afford this proposed authority to be able to focus on working on the recovery when the dust settles. The new municipal authority would be managed by a board of directors made up of civil engineers, CPAs, and health professionals who would operate with transparency and would be subject to the Open Meetings and Freedom of Information Acts. Governor Snyder's press secretary says that the governor supports the idea of a long-term structure to be in place to help the people of Flint, but as with all legislation, he wants to see a final product before signing. Michigan House Speaker Kevin Cotter of Mount Pleasant introduced a bill yesterday that would make it easier to fire state employees. Emily Lawler on MLive.com reports that the legislation is aimed at making rules available for department heads to fire employees who do not follow the mission of a department. UAW legislative liaison Ray Holman disagreed with the new rule, saying that this unnecessarily adds to a list of fireable offenses, although adding that poorly performing state employees should be held accountable, but that state employees are already singled out and disciplined every day. Holman says that he thinks that these new rules were motivated by the Flint water crisis. However, Senator Cotter defended the bill, saying that this is not a reaction to Flint and added that the legislation is intended to address conduct that directly and negatively impacts a department's ability to accomplish its statutory abilities properly. Representative Dan Lowers of Brockway, one of the sponsors of the bill, says that the investigation into the Flint water crisis revealed extensive misconduct by employees with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, but current civil service rules prevented the MDEQ from taking action against them. A bill was introduced in the U.S. Senate yesterday called the Stop Mass Hacking Act that would block a pending judicial rule change allowing U.S. judges to issue search warrants in any jurisdiction. Reuters reports that the Obama administration says that the proposed authority is designed to address crimes committed online where a physical location is sometimes spread across multiple districts. Lawmakers, on the other hand, such as Senators Rand Paul of Kentucky and Ron Wyden of Oregon, argue that the proposal would give the government broad new surveillance powers to potentially allow access to all devices attached to the Internet on a single warrant. The Associated Press reports that Justice Department officials say that the proposed rules would not give investigators any additional authorities but would permit judges to issue a warrant where a suspect uses anonymizing technology to conceal their location. Civil liberties groups and Google, however, argue that such an expansion of power should be authorized by Congress, as it could violate the U.S. Constitution's protections against unreasonable searches and seizures. Privacy experts say that while the Justice Department trumpets that the new rules could protect against child exploitation, Whistleblowers and people behind the walls of oppressive regimes who use the anonymizing technology could be identified and targeted with the government's new power. Facebook may be adding more conservative articles to their Trending Stories newsfeed. Recode.net reports that the social media company told a group of influential conservatives they are considering a restructuring of their trending stories after recent reports accused them of suppressing conservative news and injecting internally approved stories into the feed. According to a Pew Research study, Facebook has emerged as a popular platform for news organizations, with more than a third of 18- to 29-year-olds saying that they get their news primarily from the social media website. After Facebook recently disclosed a list of 1,000 media outlets that are used to populate the news feed, TheGuardian.com noted the omission of several prominent conservative news sites, and according to Engadget.com, Facebook has spoken on revamping their trending topics during a recent meeting to include more conservative news sources in their algorithm. And finally, a new cell phone app is being developed that could solve the problems of high school students, college students, and even some adults everywhere. Literally. MathPix, envisioned and developed by a Stanford Ph.D. student, Nico Jimenez, and others, would give users the ability to point their phone at, and by using image recognition technology, solve a handwritten mathematical equation. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.